The date, August 4th, 1964. For most people, it triggers no particular emotion. It's no December 7th, 1941. But August 4th is important whether you remember the date or not. It was on that date in the Gulf of Tonkin off the coast of North Vietnam that the American war in Vietnam really began. And the incident that began it has become as controversial as the war itself. The U.S. destroyers Maddox and Turner Joy were attacked by communist torpedo boats. Or were they? It's now six years and seven months since the Tonkin incident and the Tonkin resolution. The incident produced the resolution, and the resolution was quite simple. It gave the president the right to protect American troops in Vietnam with whatever means he felt necessary. The power to prevent further aggression by North Vietnam, and to prevent South Vietnam from falling to the communists. Few people at the time thought it would take more than six years and almost 45,000 dead Americans and more to achieve those ends. Boys who were 12 years old that August died last week in Vietnam. Let's go back to August 4th and the U.S. destroyers Maddox and Turner Joy and try to find out what happened that night in the Gulf of Tonkin. In July of 1964, units of the 7th Fleet were patrolling the South China Sea off the coast of Vietnam. The United States was not at war with North Vietnam, but it was helping South Vietnam with massive economic and military aid. Then, this is what happened, according to the Pentagon's official reenactment narrated by Chet Huntley. On August 2nd, the United States Navy destroyer Maddox, on patrol in international waters of the Gulf of Tonkin, begins to track three unknown craft approaching from the northwest. They are identified as North Vietnamese PT boats, armed with torpedoes and 37mm guns. When warnings from the Maddox fail to stop the oncoming PT boats, she opens fire. The Maddox, joined by the destroyer Sea Turner Joy, resumes its routine patrol. But the next night, the men on watch and the two destroyers once again detect unidentified contacts on radar. The attack by the North Vietnamese boats is renewed. After a three-hour running battle in which two of the PT boats are sunk, the attackers break contact. There was no argument about the first fight. Sunday afternoon, August 2nd. It happened. The Maddox against three North Vietnamese PT boats. Something like this painting that hangs in the Maddox ward room. The North Vietnamese said the Maddox invaded their waters, and they chased her out. The United States said the Maddox was in neutral waters, that although the Maddox fired first, it was in self-defense, when the North Vietnamese PT boats were about to attack. We're fairly sure all three PT boats were hit, and none of the torpedoes hit the Maddox. But the Maddox very likely was hit. There was a bullet hole up there in the aft gun director. It was repaired later and painted over, no sign of it today. But two nights later, the night of the controversial battle, the Maddox did not take any damage or suffer any losses, which is but one of many reasons why Senate investigators now believe there never was any battle that night. The Maddox and Turner Joy reported they were ambushed at the beginning of the evening by perhaps five or six torpedo boats. But that wound down by midnight to perhaps one boat with two torpedoes. And yet the destroyers reported a total of 22 torpedoes fired at them. They were doing a lot of firing themselves. Some people say they were firing at phantoms. The North Vietnamese always said they were never there, that it was simply an excuse to get into the war. The officer in charge of the destroyer division, which included the Maddox and the Turner Joy, was on board the Maddox that night. He's Captain John Herrick, Annapolis, 1943, still on active duty. We asked him to return to the Maddox, now a training ship, and recall the confusing events of August 4th, 1964. Well, I think the uncertainty is due to the fact that it was night, it was dark, and uh, we didn't really eyeball these boats. This would, we did have witnesses, eyeball witnesses on the, on the Turner Joy, uh, I consider them dependable witnesses. However, uh, there are people that still doubt that uh, what they saw was boats. I do not. We had sensors who sighted the boats on radar. We had sonar that picked up uh, 
noise spokes in the water. We had visual sightings. I think the preponderance of evidence, any uh, judge in a courtroom uh, would have to accept our uh, witness evidence and our sensor evidence, radar and sonar, and uh, the only conclusion uh, a logical man could reach was that we were attacked. Just above the bridge of the Maddox, where Captain Herrick was, is the main gun director. And inside the director was the sailor who was in charge of firing those powerful five-inch guns. His job was to open fire once the enemy targets were spotted on radar or sonar. Those are the main methods for detecting targets you can't see directly. The man in charge of the main gun director, August 4th, 1964, was a four-year veteran. He was also an expert sonar man, Patrick Park. Park is now a businessman in Los Angeles. Tell me, do you think that night, August 4th, in the pitch black, in a heavy swell, rainstorms, was there anything to shoot at out there? No, I don't. I'm certain that there was not anything to shoot at right from the beginning. The captain asked me immediately after the attack to go down and evaluate all the recordings that had been made of uh, noise that, was, that sonar was reporting. And uh, I kept myself pretty busy for the next three days, really, uh, trying to evaluate these things and determine if we had heard anything that might have been even a question mark that it might have been a torpedo or anything else in the water not related to the two ships or noise of either one of them. And what was your evaluation? Um, absolutely nothing. Well, Park uh, has the right to his own opinions, of course, and uh, I do not uh, concur with him, but uh, he has a right to those opinions. 